Hey, this is Keeping It Real with your host, Justin Villa Real. And today we're going to be talking about my week three NFL predictions. Let's get things started with the game that's going on tomorrow. The Miami Dolphins are playing the Jacksonville Jaguars. And I got the Dolphins in this one. I just have a feeling that Ryan Fitzpatrick and the Miami Dolphins are going to get it done here against the Jacksonville Jaguars. The up-and-coming Jacksonville Jaguars, they have a lot of picks in the upcoming drafts. And they have a young team already. Watch out for Jacksonville in a few years. Let's see if they could actually keep this team together. Because they were great in 2017. Had a great defensive core in 2017. That fell apart. Now they're trying to rebuild. They're doing a good job rebuilding. The big question for the Jaguars future is can they keep their young core when their young core starts to play like their old core did in 2017 can the jaguars keep the young core together that's going to be the question for the future the question for the present because we're in the present right now is can they beat the miami dolphins and i say no i do not see the jacksonville jaguars beating the miami dolphins next up you got the 49ers going up against the new york giants and the Niners really are catching a break here because they have a lot of injuries and they've had to go up against the Jets and now the Giants. So the Niners, an so another win for the San Francisco 49ers. And the next game we're going to be talking about, the Washington football team is going to be playing the Cleveland Browns. And Washington football team, the storyline continues. Was the curse, was there a curse put on them for using the Native Americans in a racist way and since that is no longer the case with their name has the curse been lifted this team is one and one only lost to a great arizona team and upset the philadelphia eagles in week one and i think they're going to be going two and one football team is going two and one as they beat the cleveland browns in week three up next the red hot vegas raiders are playing Cam Newton and the New England Patriots. And I got the Raiders continuing their winning ways. John Gruden is coaching this team in the right direction. Don't be surprised when this team is playing football in late January against the Tennessee Titans for a chance to go to the Super Bowl. That is right. I think the Raiders will be playing in the AFC Championship game later on this season. And they're going to go 3-0 and here. They're going to pick up the win against New England. Going to be a great game in my opinion. Up next, we got my hometown team, the Chicago Bears, traveling down to Atlanta to play the team that blows 20-point leads. They did it in the Super Bowl, and they did it last week against the Dallas Cowboys. And... The Bears are a team that play best when they are behind. You look at what happened in week one. Their most impressive victory. Out of the two victories, the better one was against Detroit. They were down. And the star quarterback in Chicago, Mitchell Trubisky, led the Bears to the win in Detroit. But then you saw week two, the that same star quarterback, Mitchell Trubisky. Throwing two touchdown passes to David Montgomery and the rookie out of Tulane, Darnell Mooney. My predictions for this game right here. It could go either way. But I got to stick with my hometown team here. Got to stick with the star quarterback, Mitchell Trubisky, who's been outplaying Mahomes and Watson so far in the 2020 season. If you don't believe me, go look at the stats. Mitchell Trubisky playing like the star that we all know he was going to be back in 2017. We knew he was going to be a star, and he's playing like it. This season, he's going to lead the Bears from back. It's going to be another 20-point lead blown for the Atlanta Falcons. As late, or at the start of the fourth quarter, the Bears are going to be down three scores like they were in Detroit. But then, the GOAT, the young star quarterback, Mitchell Trubisky is going to lead the team to the victory against the Atlanta Falcons. Watch out for the Bears as they are going to start the year 3-0. and 
the Bears, led by their, I'm going to say it again, their star quarterback, Mitchell Trubisky. Going 3-0 to start the year. Then you got the Rams and the Buffalo Bills. And you see what I mean about the Rams having to play almost all the good teams in the NFL. They still got to play the Bears. And I'm going to say it for the last time in this video. The star quarterback, Mitchell Trubisky. They still got to play Tampa Bay and Tom Brady. And they got to play the Bills. They're in a tough division. So the Rams, they're going to have a tough year because of their schedule. And it's going to show in this game as they are going to lose to the Buffalo Bills. Up next, you got the Houston Texans going up against Ben Roethlisberger and the Pittsburgh Steelers. And the Steelers have been off to a great start. And they're going to continue that great start as they will beat the struggling Houston Texans. The Texans have been struggling ever since Losing out on DeAndre Hopkins when they traded him for a bag of stale potato chips. They gave him up for nothing. And look at where they're at now. And, I mean, like I've said, I don't know if I've said this in a previous video yet. Because I got a lot of videos I've been working on that haven't published yet. But I have said this, and I'm going to say it again. I don't get why Deshaun Watson re-signed that contract extension with the Texans after... They traded DeAndre Hopkins. He knew the Texans were going to be terrible. And he knew that after this year, he would have been a free agent. And he could have gone to any team he wanted to. Not Chicago because we got Trubisky. But any other team other than the Bears, he could have went to. Played on a good team and actually could have competed while making a lot of money. He's just going to be in Houston. Yeah, he's got a lot of money. But he's, he's not going to have a lot of wins. And at the end of the day... You go to the Hall of Fame for wins, not how much you signed for. And don't get me wrong, Deshaun Watson is a Hall of Fame worthy quarterback in my opinion. But the problem is he's he wants to be in Houston with absolutely nobody. And that's not going to result in wins. This is not basketball. He can't carry the Houston Texans. Yeah, he's a great quarterback. But what's going to happen is Trubisky's winning in Chicago. Mahomes is winning in Kansas City. Watson... If he wanted to be looked at as one of those guys, he should have said, all right, well, Houston's trading everybody away, so I'm going to sign with a team that I could actually compete with because Trubisky's going to win a Super Bowl in Chicago. When you look at how well that Bears team is playing, he's going to win a Super Bowl. Mahomes may win multiple Super Bowls with the Chiefs. He already has one. And so if you're Watson, you're going to end up look, being the third best quarterback in that draft class just because the other two are on teams that they could win, and they're also playing just as well as you are. Look at the stats right now. Watson has the least amount of touchdowns out of those three quarterbacks. Out of that draft class, Mahomes and Trubisky have more touchdown passes. And I don't want to hear about, oh, who they're playing, because if they had Hopkins, they're not 0-2, they're 1-1, or they're potentially 2-1-0. And so that is why Watson, it was a stupid move to sign a contract extension because he's not making the playoffs in Houston. He, that's not a playoff team. He's a playoff caliber quarterback. He's a Hall of Fame caliber quarterback. But the problem is it's not going to be reflected in his resume when he's on a team that's going to be losing a lot. So no, he's not a terrible quarterback. But at the Hall of Fame, they're going to be looking like, oh, Mahomes won Super Bowls. Threw a lot of touchdowns. Trubisky won Super Bowls. Threw a lot of touchdowns. Watson threw a decent amount of touchdowns, but didn't have anybody to play with. Didn't go to the playoffs a lot. Didn't win anything. That's how they're going to... This is how Watson's going to be looked at if he stays in Houston. Whereas, if he did not sign that contract extension, he could have signed for just as much on a team that he could compete with. And then, he would have went to that team. Like, maybe... I don't know. Obviously... The season hasn't ended yet, and you know the contract, like the, the free agency situation, but maybe like Cleveland where you have Odell Beckham Jr. and Jarvis Landry, if you signed with that team, okay, now you could compete, now you can win games, and then now you could potentially win Super Bowls just like Trubisky's doing in Chicago and Mahomes is doing in Kansas City. And so what I'm saying is 
Watson, if he wants to be looked at as a great quarterback, he's got to get out of Houston, but he doesn't want to get out of Houston. And that just, that makes no sense to me. Why are you putting yourself in a position to lose if you're Deshaun Watson? You want to win. Put yourself in a position to win. No one's forcing you to stay in Houston. No, but if you, like, Houston's not a free agent destination right now. No one wants to go to Houston except for Deshaun Watson because you got Bill O'Brien trading everybody away. And it makes no sense why he's so loyal to a terrible franchise because, okay, yeah, that's great and all that he's loyal, but when you, when, his career is going to be looked back on. It's going to be looked back on with no Super Bowls if he stays in Houston. And they're going to compare that resume to Trubisky in Chicago and Mahomes in Kansas City. And yeah, they did get lucky because they both got drafted to good overall teams. Like Watson's a good overall quarterback. He's a great quarterback, but he's not on a great team. And when you look at guys that did not win championships that are great, they're not seen as as great, even if they maybe are more talented they're not seen as greater players than talented players that won a lot and so that is why Watson should not have signed that contract extension with the Houston Texans he should have just went to free agency signed with a team that he could compete to win a Super Bowl with and that's what he should have done but he didn't do that and that's why he's going to continue throwing the least amount of touchdowns out of that 2017 draft class and why he's going to be looked at as the third best quarterback he, right now, he's the third best quarterback in that draft class. Look at the stats. Both Trubisky and Mahomes have more touchdowns. Yes, they have more people to throw the ball to, but that's my point. They do have more people to throw the ball to. And he signed a contract extension to stay on a team where he has nobody to throw the ball to. Like, And that's why he should have left Houston or played in Houston and then Free agency comes, sign with the new team. That's what he should have done. He didn't do that. Makes no sense. Now, we're moving on from a team that's terrible in the Houston Texans to a team that I think will win the Super Bowl this year. The Tennessee Titans, they are playing the Minnesota Vikings who are 0-2. Vikings losing a division and arch rival Green Bay Packers in week one. And then losing to the, up and, the most up and down team in the NFL, the Indianapolis Colts in week two. That was the most shocking loss from week two, in my honest opinion. And now this team, the Minnesota Vikings, they're going to be playing a red-hot Tennessee Titans team, a team with the best player in football in Derrick Henry on the Titans, Ryan Tannehill, who's been playing amazing football. And this Titans team is just clicking, heading in the right direction, playing winning football, playing championship caliber football, I expect the Titans, and I think the Titans will continue to play championship-level football in Week 3 against the Minnesota Vikings. Now, moving on to the Indianapolis Colts game, and this Colts team has been the most up-and-down team of the season so far because in Week 1, they had a game that they should have won against the Jacksonville Jaguars, and then I obviously laughed at the Indianapolis Colts franchise for losing to Jacksonville. Now, I did apologize in a video where I said, hey, you guys proved me wrong when you beat the Minnesota Vikings. And so, yeah, the Colts really up and down, lose to a team that they probably should have beat and then beat a team that they probably should have lost to. And so I don't really know who's going to win here. I got Indianapolis winning because they are playing the New York Jets and that's a really bad team, and so they're going to pick up the win, but I wouldn't be surprised if they lost to this team either. I mean, anything that Indianapolis does at this point does not surprise me. This team's going to go 8-8. Eight and eight. They're going to win, lose, win, lose, win, lose for the rest of the season. They're going to win this week. Then next week in Chicago, they will lose and then win the week after that, then lose the week after that. That's kind of how the season is most likely going to go for the Indianapolis Colts. With the way they've been playing so far in this season. But they will beat the New York Jets in this game. Moving on, the Dallas Cowboys coming off that 20-point comeback against the Atlanta Falcons. They're playing one of the toughest teams in the NFL, the Seattle Seahawks. And I got the Seahawks winning this game. I think the Cowboys are going to finish 8-8. Eight eight. Kind of like the Colts. They're going to be a very up-and-down team. And so last week, well, week one... Cowboys get embarrassed by the Rams. 
Then week two, they get the most impressive win of week two, beating the Falcons after going down 20 points in the fourth quarter. And then now this week, they're going to lose to the Seattle Seahawks. Kind of see how the Colts and Cowboys have been up and down this whole year. But yeah, Seahawks, they're going to win. And it's going to be a battle between Arizona and Seattle for who wins the NFC West. And speaking of Arizona, this is the next matchup that we will be talking about is the Arizona Cardinals are playing the Detroit Lions. And so I've seen on the internet, Cardinal fans are talking about going 5-0. and And I've been trying to tell them, you got to take things one game at a time. You're 2-0 right now. Yeah, I can't see them going 5-0. and But we're not talking about weeks 4 and 5. We're talking about week 3 right now. I've been trying to tell these people in Arizona, just calm down. You put, like, hit the brakes for a little bit. Take things one game at a time. You don't know how teams are going to look in week five or week four. Just focus on this week. And so this week, they got the Detroit Lions. And the Lions will score 14 points in the fourth quarter and then lose like they've done in week one against the Bears and week two against the Packers. They're going to do it against the Arizona Cardinals. And the Arizona Cardinals are going to continue to stay right hot. Very fitting that they do play in Arizona because Arizona... It's a very hot state, literally, and then figuratively, the Cardinals are a very hot team. They are a red hot team going 3-0, potentially 5-0, like Cardinals fans have been talking about. But, I mean, I'm trying to tell these people in Arizona, you got to relax for a minute here, talking about 5-0. We got to win three games, then win four games, and then talk about 5-0. Don't go from, oh, we're 2-0 to 5-0. You got That's not how it works. Mathematically speaking... You don't go one, two, five. You go one, two, three, four, five. That's how things got to be for the Arizona Cardinals. You can't just skip ahead into the future. You got to stay in the present. You're not in the future. You're not in week five. You're in week three. Focus on week three. Don't focus on week five. Focus on week three. It's how you're going to win football games. Focus on the present. Focus on the Detroit Lions. Don't worry about what Seattle's doing. Don't worry about... Who you're playing in week four or five, focus on beating this Lions team. That's what Arizona's got to do, and I think they will get it done, although it does not take a lot to beat the Detroit Lions. I mean, at this point, Detroit's got to change their name to the Detroit Kittens because ain't nobody scared of them. You think of a lion, you think of, like, something that's, like, scary. You don't think of that when you think of this, this football team. You think of this football franchise, you think of one of the worst football franchises in the NFL throughout history. I mean, they lose everybody. You got people like Calvin Johnson retiring early because they don't want to play for this team. And it's been this way. Continue. Like, it's still been this way. The, the Lions have the same problems they have now that they've been having before. It is very ironic because they fired Jim Caldwell who went for going 9-7. In a year where Jim Caldwell went 9-7, the Detroit Lions fired him. They then replaced him with Matt Patricia, who has won nine games since then. So, I mean, it's just, they've won nine games in like three or four years. That They're averaging three wins per year in Detroit. That's, that's impressive. That's impressive, but not in a good way. Moving on, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are playing the Denver Broncos. And, man, I feel for Denver and their fans because... They played great in week one, lose last second to the Tennessee Titans. Then they play Pittsburgh, played great, lose. And they, like, Denver, they're not a bad team, but they have lost to two good teams, and they're going to continue to lose. They're going to go 0-3, although the Broncos are going to be the best 0-3 team in NFL history because they're like Tom Brady and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers can smell blood in the water in that NFC South division. The Saints just lost to the Las Vegas Raiders the other day. Now, New Orleans has to play a red hot Green Bay team. Meanwhile, in Tampa Bay, the Buccaneers, they got to play the Broncos. And so I think that the Buccaneers are going to capitalize on this opportunity to take the division lead over the Saints and the Buccaneers are going to be really motivated to win this game and the Buccaneers are going to get the win against the Denver Broncos. We're going to fall to 0-3, although they are going to be better than their record shows, but they just can't win football games. They just have a tough schedule and 
Hopefully things can turn around for that young football team in Denver, Colorado. But it's not going to be turning around in week three because they will lose to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Moving on to another team in the NFC South, the New Orleans Saints. They're going to be playing the Green Bay Packers. And I honestly think that coming off a loss to the Raiders, like if you can't beat the Las Vegas Raiders, then how are you going to stop Aaron Rodgers? If you let Derek Carr beat you, what makes anybody think, like, I want the Saints to win this game, but I just don't see it happening. I think Green Bay is going to get the win, especially because Green Bay has a lot of pressure on them because if they lose Chicago, they're going 3-0. and And then, I know I said to Arizona, don't get ahead of yourself, but the Bears got the Falcons and the Colts. So the Bears are going to most likely go 4-0. and so if you're Green Bay, you got to keep up with the Chicago Bears. And this is a must-win game for both teams. It's a must-win game for the New Orleans Saints. Because they, if if the Saints lose, they lose the lead in their division. If the Packers lose, they lose the lead in their division to the Chicago Bears. So it's a big week for the Chicago Bears and Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Because what they win, they could take the lead in their division. And then it's a big week for the Saints and Packers. Because if they lose... They will lose the lead in their division. So, big week for a lot of teams in week three. It's going to be a great season because things are already getting close in week three. So, that's how you know it's going to be a wild ride until week 17 is over with. And then the playoffs. And the final game, you got Patrick Mahomes going up against Lamar Jackson as the Kansas City Chiefs take on the Baltimore Ravens and I think that the reigning league MVP, Lamar Jackson, is going to get it done because the Chiefs almost lost to Justin Herbert and the Chargers. And so if, if they're having trouble beating the Los Angeles Chargers, what makes anybody think that they are going to loot, they're going to be able to beat the Baltimore Ravens? So I think the Ravens are going to get this victory. And the final game, save the best for last, the Carolina Panthers going up against the Los Angeles Chargers, and so on paper, the Chargers are the better team, and the Chargers probably should win this game, but I'm going with the upset of the week here. Carolina is going to win this football game because, like I talked about in my previous video, there's a lot of controversy controversy going down in Los Angeles with the Chargers and their quarterback situation. Did they intentionally injure Tyrod Taylor? Did team doctors take out Tyrod Taylor on purpose? You got all this controversy surrounding the Los Angeles Chargers and Carolina. This is their opportunity to get a win. This is their opportunity to steal a win away from a better team. That's why I think the Carolina Panthers are getting the upset of the week here over the Los Angeles Chargers. That is all for today's video. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more sports content.